Almighty God, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed, and given up into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human, so will the crowds be astonished at him, and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told, and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard? And to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him, no looks to attract our eyes, a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people scream their faces, he was despised, and we took no account of him. Yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly, he never opened his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken, would anyone plead his cause? Yes. He was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs, he shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty, for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner, while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. My God, my God, look upon me, why hast thou forsaken me? And art so far from my health and from the words of my complaint. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou heedest not. And in the night season also I take no rest. And thou continuest holy, O thou worship of Israel. Our fathers forbid in thee, they trusted in thee, and thou didst deliver them. They called upon thee, and were hoven. They put their trust in thee, and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, a very scorn of men and the outcast of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot up their lips and shake their heads, saying, He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he will have him. But thou art he that to 
took me out of my mother's womb. Thou wast my hope when I hanged yet upon my mother's breasts. I have been left unto thee ever since I was born. Thou art my God even from my mother's womb. O go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help me. Many oxen are come about me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my jones are out of joint. My heart also in the midst of my body is even like melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my gums. And thou shalt bring me into the dust of death. For many dogs are come about me, and the counsel of the wicked layeth siege against me. They pierced my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. Thou art my succour, hate thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. Thou hast heard me also from among the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. O oh, praise the Lord, ye that fear him. Magnify him, all ye of the seed of Jacob, and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He hath not hid his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. My praise is of thee in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of them that fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. They that seek after the Lord shall praise him. Your heart shall live for ever. All the ends of the world shall remember themselves and be turned unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the people. All such as be fat upon earth have eaten and worshipped. All they that go down into the dust shall kneel before him, and no man hath quickened his own soul. My seed shall serve him. They shall be counted unto the Lord for a generation. They shall come, and the heavens shall proclaim his righteousness. Unto a people that shall be born, whom the Lord hath made. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a High Priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, 
though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was a son, he learned to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, who has highly exalted him, has given him a name which is above every name. Thank you, Father. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. And at that time Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers threatened a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, When thought thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend, whosoever maketh himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew capital. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour. 
And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. They delivered him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two other with him on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast not for it whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, And 
and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. <coughs> the Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation, that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced at his side, and forthwith came their heart blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said true, that he might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture said, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, he sought Pilate that he might take away the body. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquillity and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty.
Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all bishops, priests and deacons of the church and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that, by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts, and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by the integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognise the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all.
Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that, throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travellers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, whereon was hung the world's salvation. O come, let us
mercy on us, O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.